JavaScript provides a set timeout function whose structure is this. Actually, it takes three arguments, but the third is optional and not all that useful. Anyways, so the first function is a callback function, which the set timeout function will call. And the second argument is an integer denoting the number of milliseconds after which this callback function is to be called. So the idea is to invoke the callback function after a certain timeout. Let me quickly do a simple example to show how it works. Let me call set timeout function and pass an anonymous function which just logs this message. Then the other argument is the number of milliseconds after which this function should be called. So let's pass 2000 for that because we want that this function executes after two seconds. So if we run this and here it executed after two seconds. Now, what is this one? Well, that's the ID value of the timer so that we can use it in case we want to cancel the timer by calling the clear timeout method. Let me execute this method again with seven seconds and call the clear timeout and pass this ID. And now you should not see the log statement if you were able to type it on time. Otherwise you can increase the timeout period and then try to cancel the timer to see what's happening. If we want some code to be executed over and over, what should we do? Well, this callout method itself should make a call to set timeout, right? Let's implement the slideshow example, which will change the picture every five seconds. So let me implement a function named change pick. And this function takes an integer as an argument, which tells us which picture is to be set. So we will basically pass the index to the pictures array here. Let's change the source to the nth index of the pictures array. Now we would like this same method to be called again, but with the incremented index, right? So we can call set timeout and pass an anonymous function which calls the change pick function, but with an incremented index so that the next index can be set, right? Here we have wrapped the change pick function inside this anonymous function because the callback function to set timeout doesn't take arguments. But here our change pick function takes the index argument. And if you notice, n is a closure here. So even when the function returns, n will be available for callback after the given period. But right now we only have these three image URLs. So after the index two, we will not get any image. So instead of using the index n directly, we can use the mod operator like this. So that when the value of the index goes over the length, the index can again start from zero. Okay. And now we need to call this change pick function once from the load method, passing an index value of zero. Let's reload the page. And you should be able to see the simple slideshow. We can put some cool animations, but we will do that in the tutorial on jQuery because building an animation library will be a little complex.